With winter setting in in New Zealand and my visa only days away from expiring, I hopped on a plane and made my way back to the States. After a visit to Los Angeles and popping around the rest of the country to see friends and family, I eventually made my way to Maine to see Captain Noah Peffer and to visit one of America's most beautiful cruising grounds. We had a fantastic night on the hook last night. This place is so well protected and so still. And we're blessed with like blue skies today. No fog, no rain, which is pretty rare in Maine apparently. Noah headed ashore with the pup, Tony, to do her business, get a little walk in, and then we are going to haul up and head on to Pulpit Harbor, I think is the name of it. Looks cool on the map. It's like 13 miles south of here, different island. Have a nice little breeze happening right now. I think this is a really good sort of taste of the magic of cruising in Maine. You have a lot of adventure tax to pay cruising in the ground this beautiful there's so much fog and rain here and then obviously the winter is pretty harsh but if you're willing to deal with the challenging aspects you also get these like stunning views with beautiful sunshine as well um, i've never been anywhere in the united states with such a rich maritime history I know it's the case all throughout New England, but this is the first time I've ever spent any time anywhere in New England is here in Maine. And um, it's remarkable, to say the least. We're in this massive, well-protected anchorage. The only time I've ever seen an anchorage with this much protection is in New Zealand. Um, visually, the landscape here reminds me of sailing in the Stockholm Archipelago. It looks a lot like the Stockholm Archipelago. So, I guess the difference being between here and the Baltic is the extreme tidal ranges here. We're not far from the Bay of Funday, which has the largest tidal range in the world, where the Baltic has no tides. I want to give a shout out real quick to the company that makes these bug screens. I have no affiliation with them or anything. This is something that Noah's wife Alex bought for the boat, <laughs> and, he, and he said he like told her we don't need those you know what are you getting this stuff for and boy we were praising her name last night for getting them um we had a serious army of mosquitoes trying to get in the boat and these bug screens were pretty fantastic um it's similar to the one i made for tritea where it just it's kind of universal it just flops over this is like a weighted bottom so it just holds itself down and then we had another one for the companion way and I'll show you the name of the company so that if you want to get them for your boat. This is the box that they come in. We got two of them. And again, I have no affiliation with that company. I don't know anything about them other than the fact that it really saved us last night. And uh, very, very handy bug screens. How'd it go? Good? Where's the pup? Oh, she's tired. <laughs> Three poops, many peas. Success, good it's times. Like, good job, Tony. Objectively, like a totally great trip ashore for Tony. So I want to show you guys Noah's anchor setup because it's 
um, not conventional, but it has some logic to it. So I wanted to have him talk about this whole thing. So, so what did you do here? And what was the... So you... uh, the anchor just runs back to a box that carries all the chain right next to the mast so that there's no weight in the front of the boat. Yeah, you moved it all aft. Yeah, right? she's really pointy and pretty light, so she wants the weight in the middle of the boat, otherwise she hobby horses when it's rough. Yeah, and then and it's a vertical stack box, right? It is. Yeah, so I built a couple different maquettes and stacked all my chain in it to see how it would fit. Mm -hmm. um, and you said it's still kind of a work in progress. You're still feeling it's a work, that what it's, makes this things. is not 100%. I can't sign yeah. off on this <laughs> at all. Um, it has worked so far. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing there's going to be a moment when it's super windy that this is going to go sideways and I'm going to curse it. <laughs> but it's but good it to was, try new things. It's worth it, a try with yeah. the little boat I've gotten. As so weird that's as I the could. chain pipe, and Samson post. Samson post. And then you did these little runners. Yeah, the, there's a track, and then these things just lock the chain in place. And then there's a really uh, a cat line that's on a purchase that makes sure that everything's nice and tight, which oh, right, right. I've definitely broken and like launched myself off this <clears> other <throat> boat with. And then here's the box here yeah. where it falls into. And you got those access doors in case it gets. Yeah. Stuck. So the design came from somebody way smarter than me. Yeah, you it saw the design. It came from Rich, Rich and Sherry Crow that ran Alaskan Eagle for a zillion years oh, on okay. their boat, Taboo. And that's how they do it? Yeah, I mean, they had a windlass here. Mm -hmm. It was just like this with a windlass. It's pretty um, neat to be able to move the weight aft. That's a pretty cool. If I mean, you have room to do it, it's a pretty neat option. They're way better sailors than I could ever dream of being, <laughs> and they did it, so I figured I'd try. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Uh, I also suspect that there was some details in their setup that I've missed. <laughs> Time will tell. Yeah, you know, you, you may experience them. You may be able to document them. <laughs> Let's put you back where like you're not in pitching boat mode if it's rough. Yeah, that's true. You're definitely not Something's over. gonna go sideways. Yeah. This is too much. Yeah, that is very much. Yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> that is the big one. Yeah, look at that. Oh wow. I thought people have deck spray downs. <laughs> We're gonna use the old fashioned deck spray. It's like Beaufort Zero now. Um, we sailed as long as we could, and then we were just sitting still with the current. So <clears throat> we are now on our way. We're seven miles from North Haven Island. Pulpit Harbor is where we are bound. We are approaching Pulpit Harbor on North Haven. Looks really cool and very, very tight. Really small entrance to this harbor, which makes for a neat spot because that means it's going to be very well protected.
feels good. Oh yeah. Feels like Southern California. Too hot. We, what did we anchor in, Noah? What, 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 20 foot, 25, right? 25, yeah. We anchored in 25 feet of water. We have that like four scope. This really cool little nook. It's called Cabot's Cove. And it's in Minster, Minister's Creek or something like that. And there's thousands of fish here really nice little spot and uh, should have a chill night on the hook we'll probably take the dinghy and go exploring later and now gotta cool off from the heat So this gentleman just rode in a second ago in that little dory caught himself a pretty pretty big fish he was not in here very long before he caught that fish cook it up for breakfast me and Noah are just talking about we I think we're surrounded by like a million fish no exaggeration because it's, it's as densely packed as this in the whole harbor it's just insane If I had a drone, we could put it up right now and you would just see the entire harbor is packed with fish. It's wild. Another very peaceful night on the hook and uh, pretty good little spot. A little rough on the holding yesterday when we set the hook, but in calm weather, it's really nice. <clears throat> We're gonna head ashore in a bit and check out a trail No, I found yesterday. And then later this afternoon, head back to Islesboro. It's been a nice couple days out cruising Maine. And uh, another good spot for Noah and Alex to know about if they want to come over here and spend a nice quiet weekend.
much. What? And my entire outboard weighs as much as this. Yeah, I was really impressed to find out that the hard box didn't so light. Old big giant dock that must have washed ashore during a storm. Seems like all of this is the the tidal ranges here are crazy. We're close to the Bay of Funde, so the tidal range I think right now is like over 10 foot. Um, so all this stuff is obviously underwater at high tide. Oh yeah, pretty extensive tr trail network, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a snake. That was scary. <laughs> that was scary. A <laughs> big snake? Yeah. She's very spooky. Point <laughs> But you said it's... Oh, well. On Owlsbury, it's only garter snakes. Do you guys have poisonous snakes in Maine? No, there's no poisonous snakes in Maine. That's point. good. Maybe in, like, western Maine, but not here. That's point. Go, Tony, go, go. <laughs> Tony. Well, but only over there. You can totally see Alsboro. Wow, what a view here, huh? Oh yeah, you can't see the phone. Come on, Tom. I'm going to take a wake over there. Oh, you too? <clears throat> There's a ton of fog, sort of, inland. But we're going to head around. I don't know if you can see it. There's like a point here. That's the bottom of Islesboro. That's what we're going to round and come up the southern end. So we'll be circumnavigating Islesboro basically on this trip. Lot of, there's like a billion lobster pots. You see them? Yeah. So many lobster pots between us and the island. It's crazy. But beautiful out right now. Yeah, this is like the main experience over here. There's a lot of lobsters. There's a billion. So crazy. Less than a few, like it's navigable. Fox coming in. We're gonna have a very hazy drive. Part of life, Noah says, here in Maine. We had a beautiful morning, though. Those around here.
I can count like 50 lobster pots within the view of what we're driving through right now. It's crazy. It's like a minefield. And Noah said it's not, this isn't even really bad compared to some places he's been in Maine. He said it'll be so bad that you have to touch them with the boat. You just want to make sure they don't get under the boat. So gnarly. I mean, I think you can punch through any of these things. I've, I'm just working my way up to it. Yeah. I've seen in New England, there's some spots I've gone through that you get there and there's like seven knots of current and a, <laughs> and a boat sitting on the rocks. Right. There's this place called Woods Hole, which is like... There's a bald eagle. Yeah? Yep. What town is that? We are sailing into Gilkey Harbor. It's been very light airs since we got in, but enough to sail, which is nice. And it um, feels like looking at the water texture, we should be able to sail all the way through the harbor. This is Illsboro, so we're just gonna cut through this little harbor. It's like a shortcut, pop out, and then make way for Seal Harbor, which is very close, which is where Mongrel lives on the mooring. It's beautiful up in here though. And we really lucked out. It was supposed to be thunderstorms today, but now they're gonna come later tonight. So we scored on the good weather. decided to make its noise. Hang on a sec, I just free this from the head to the back side.
made. And we're back safely at Seal Harbor. Um, awesome little three day trip, getting a taste of what it's like cruising in Maine. Super stoked to be out with Noah and Tony uh, on this Finn Flyer 31 mongrel. And um, really incredible. This is the closest place in America that I've seen to New Zealand as far as like really rich cruising ground goes. And um, I will definitely be back to cruise more in Maine in the future. I want to thank Noah and his wife Alex for hosting me for three weeks in Maine. And thanks so much to Noah for taking me out for this cruise. It was fantastic to see you guys and to get a taste of cruising in Maine. If you enjoy the content on this channel and would like to contribute, you can consider joining the Patreon crew. Thanks for watching. Fair winds until next time.